And that special assessment tax can be assessed in a couple of different ways. The most common is usually what they call just a prorated tax, meaning, okay, this sewer is going to help out 14 people. There are 14 houses and the cost is $14,000. So each person is going to pay a thousand dollars. They just split it pro rata because this is an example of where each house or each person gets a representative share of the deal. You know, you know your sewer is equally important to you as it might be the next guy. So they just divide it by the, the number of people that get the benefit and go, okay, boom, there's your special assessment. That is typically how they do that. They use these special assessments very often to improve large scale projects, like maybe a new mall that's going to go in or a sports center, something like that. There are other properties that we have talked about or other liens. And we mentioned this thing called the involuntary, I mean, the voluntary specific lien. Notice the word equitable is not there because when it comes to voluntary, they're all equitable because there is no statutory, there is no law that's voluntary. So a lot of times when you see them talking about mortgages, they will only use these two words, voluntary specific, because it's equitable. It has to be. A mechanics lien, once again, involuntary, meaning you chose to do it and then you didn't get paid, then you didn't pay for it. So someone had to sue you and therefore it's involuntary. It's statutory and it is specific because it's attached to that one piece of property. And that would be called that mechanics lien that we touched on that I said can be um, anybody that repairs your property. Could be a carpenter, could be a roofer, could be an HVAC, could be lawn care. And those get filed by date and therefore assigned at priority. Now, the funny thing is, and I, I've never filed these, so I'm not inherently... Um, understanding 100% because I've never filed them. But dude, they can pick about any date they want. Was it the date that they actually dropped the materials? Was it the date they worked? Was the date that the, the contractor signed it or delivered it? So you should specifically look in your jurisdiction and which state you're in as to what date actually becomes established for those. In some states, Indiana is not one of them. Mechanics liens give priority over other liens. I don't know any of the states that that's actually true. The second or the last one that we want to talk about is this judgment. Or let's go back to see if I've still got this on here somewhere. I don't know if I got rid of that original drawing or not. this judgment right here, which is a general lien. It is placed against your real property and your personal property. And I joked with you and said it goes against your silverware and your Frisbee and your children and your dogs and your cars and your motorcycle. Well, that's kind of true, but the reality is it really is attached to things we track, all right? When you sell stuff like your Frisbee at a garage sale, we don't really track the ownership, so it's hard to. But things like automobiles, airplanes, rental properties, homeowner properties, uh, cars, uh, motorcycles, RVs, boats, all of those things that have titles that go with them, these will this involuntary general lien is going to show up against you, and it's going to attach just like a regular lien. So let's say you had a first lien of 100,000, but you lost that court case for 10 grand, you're going to have, let's go back to that 
year 2020. Now you've got this other lien that shows up on April the 1st of 2023. And it would be paid off just like a, a and I'm going to use the word regular lien. This is a regular lien. All right. So when that person sells the house, the first money is going to go to that fifth third bank. But now there's a second money that has to get paid off to Raymond because he won the lawsuit against you and you got a $10,000 judgment. That $10,000 also is going to show up on your airplane. You know, you, let's say you owe $5 million on an airplane. Well, you now owe, you know, $10,000 more. And it's going to show up. You've got this sweet Trans Am that's worth five grand, but now you've got another... 10 grand. Look at this one. That one's really upside down. They won't be able to sell this sweet Trans Am. You know, it's got the big eagle on the hood, like the Smokey and the Bandit. And they go to sell this, and the title company or the BMV is going to go, wait, 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 wait. You can't do that. There is an outstanding lien that can't be cleared because you sold it for five grand. So, what I have done in this example is applied or attached this lien to all of their properties until I get paid. And when one of these sell, let me see if I can do this. That's the airplane. And that's their house. This judgment, which goes on personal property, will go on all of these until this person sells something and let's say they sell their airplane or let's say they sell their house because we've already got a checkbox and they pay me my 10 grand, then I can go and release these liens and now they can sell that Trans Am for 5000 because that lien has gone, all right? But watch this. This actually does something better. I told you it also attaches to their person. It attaches to their person. So this person who owns all of this now wants to go out and buy one of those new uh, Corvettes and they want to borrow the 90 grand. And the GMC credit says, okay, we'll loan you the 90 grand and put a lien on the car. Just like before, there's that new Corvette. But wait, Raymond also has a $10,000, or not Raymond, whoever I won the lawsuit against, that was dated, what, 4-1 of 23. And now, if, and make sure you hear what I said, if GMC loaned you that at today's date, November of 23, it actually would come in second because there's already one lien against Raymond's person. So what GM is going to say is, dude, we're not going to do that because we don't want to be second and run the risk of not getting paid. So in essence, not only have I blocked the sale over here, I've also blocked the purchase purchase because it goes against their person, all right? So that is a general lien that is always involuntary, equitable, that is called a judgment, which is issued by a judge in a court of law. That would be the involuntary, equitable, general lien. It would be used to make sure that that person satisfies that court requirement to pay me that 10 grand that I deserve based on the judge saying, yes, I did. I won the court case. There is that inheritance tax, which is also involuntary, but it is a law that says corporations must pay taxes. So there could be a uh, inheritance on that. The utility lien, you don't pay a utility like the water. The water company can put a lien on the property. Once again, it is equitable, 
because it's based on the outstanding amount of the bill. This is an issue that if you want to be a landlord, you got to be careful of because if your tenant is supposedly paying their water bill and they fail to do that, the water company is going to put a lien on your property. So you got to make sure that they keep up with their water bill. I keep saying water bill because that is one that I am inherently familiar with because where I own rental properties, the water company will actually put liens. Let's say you chose to go out and bail someone out of jail. You can actually get a lien against your property. All right. It would be a voluntary. You have chosen to go and borrow the money to bail someone out. Now, the one that's funny to me is this one. If you fail to pay your income tax. Now, we have been talking about taxes and we have always said real estate. This is a situation of maybe you didn't pay your income tax. So the IRS is now going to put a lien on everything you own. Once again, involuntary, done by a court system. There is a law, so it's statutory. And they are going to put a lien so that you can't sell all of your toys like the airplane and that sweet Trans Am or your car. And they're going to do that. But the funny thing is with this tax lien, just funny to me, these guys actually do play by the rules, meaning they will go into third position or second position. Now, they are a lot quicker in forcing the sale through a uh, taking of your property or through the foreclosure of your house, but understand that they do actually fall in to position. All right. So what we've been talking about now is that second type of encumbrance. All right. That lien, a future interest in property. And it's based on a monetary value. That monetary value either comes from some equitable of what's fair number or some statutory law. I suggest you do your homework down here again. And also look at the stuff in the back of your ebook to do those questions. If you have any specific questions for me, feel free to email me at Raymond at realuniversity.com. Remember, this is what I do. Don't feel like you're imposing upon me and I don't want to bother you. Believe it or not, I get people a lot go, well, I didn't want to bother you. Dude, that's what you're paying me for. You're paying for this education. So use the uh, all the assets that you can. One of those is going to be me if you have questions. All right. I'll see you on the next chapter. Have a good day.